Hey, my name is Mike and this is Coffee Custom Builds and today we are gonna compare the router table and a shaper. So we use the router table all the time in this shop, but we are a production shop and I wanted to be able to move, remove more material and cut into deeper pieces and bigger pieces, and that required us to get a shaper. So that's why I brought this tool in, because time is of the essence in here. So right out of the gate, some of the biggest comparisons between the router table and the shaper is that obviously the shaper is bigger, and it's bigger for a reason. A router table runs a router. The routers can only push like a quarter inch or a half inch, call it on them. Obviously being able to run a larger bit means you can remove a lot more material. And that's really the biggest thing here. And routers, they kind of tend to burn out really quick. They, they aren't really meant to run nonstop all the time. For example, I've replaced the router in my router table three times in the last four years. And honestly, kind of peek behind the scenes, I could probably replace the bushings in it. But for me, because this is a production shop, it's quicker and cheaper for me to just put a brand new router in there than to spend a time futzing with it and trying to get the bushings replaced. With a shaper, you're running a spindle, and that's just a motor with a belt connected to the arbor. And that can run all day long. And that's really where the shaper shines over the router table, because this thing can run all day long for probably years before it's ever gonna break down. One thing to consider, obviously, with the shaper is that it takes up a large footprint. It's a big tool, and you know it needs that because it has a bigger motor and you're doing bigger things on it. The table's really deep, and you, know, you can add wings onto these things that make it really wide, too. So this takes up a lot of space. In comparison, if you have a dedicated router table, which I don't have for my router, mine's a wing on my table saw, that can still take up a decent amount of space too, but it's not gonna be this deep. So there's just space constraints you need to consider when you get a shaper as well. One great feature of the shaper is that you can reverse the direction of the spindle. Right now, this one's running in reverse. You can have it go forward, obviously. And why you'd want that is if you're templating out parts, if you're going forward, and you're cutting or you're flushing up a face on like a foot for a table and you need to go do the other side, if you try to start that other side, you're gonna have this, this cutter head turning this way and it's gonna blow out all your ingrain. So what you can do is take the cutter out, flip it over, change the direction of the spindle and you can flush up your piece. One really important thing to note is how quickly you can change bits on a router table compared to changing cutters on a shaper. Changing bits takes about 15 to 20 seconds on the router table. You can change between a flush trim bit or some sort of profile bit, round over, whatever, chamfer. It takes no time. So if you're doing one piece and you have a bunch of different profiles you have to do, this is perfect. This is a great solution for what you need. Changing out the cutter is not a small task. You actually have to access it from the back panel, hold it in place with a wrench, and then loosen it. It's kind of an ordeal. So the only time that's actually really beneficial is if you are batching out a lot of parts. You'll start on one side of the piece, switch over the cutter head, reverse the direction, and then do the other side of the piece. So just to show the differences between the cutters on the shaper and the router bits that you can run, this is a flush trimming bit and it is a four and three quarters of an inch tall bit. There just is no way a router could run something this large. So when you have a very large piece that you need to flush up, you can only do it on the shaper, unless you wanna do it with multiple passes on the router table, which you can do, but in a shop like mine, we need to do it in one pass. So let's talk about cost of entry. For a router table, you could very realistically get a pretty good setup for under $1,000 and you'll be rocking and rolling, and it'll probably last you most of your life. With the shaper, you could probably find a used one for around $1,000, but for a new one, you're gonna be spending about 2,500 to 3,000 bucks. And then you gotta start buying the cutters, and that's where the price really changes. You can get a router bit for like 15 bucks for a real cheap one, probably won't last you very long, and you can get a really good one for like 125 to 150 bucks. Some of these shapers start at $200. This specific cutter was $350, and they can go up from there. The difference is obviously that they're able to remove much more material and they're just production monsters. So let's talk about who it would be for, and that would be a production shop. Places that are making lots of doors, drawers, if you're doing raised panels on cabinets, things like that, that's where this tool really shines. Uh, the bottom line is, the answer is 
production work. If you're making one of something, you can get away with it on the router table. If you're making a hundred of something, you really need a shaper. So that is the real quick comparison of the router table and the shaper. We are still figuring out how we're gonna integrate this tool into our workflow here. So let me know if you have any questions on how you could use it in your shop or if you plan on getting one down below in the comments and we will talk to you on the next one. Thank you